My name's Chris, thank you for tuning in again. So you're probably wondering right now, like what the heck the difference is between spirometry and dose monography. And it is pretty complicated, especially when they try and compare the two, but I'm gonna be trying to simplify it right now. So with spirometry, this is when they're gonna have you blow in and out and then do like a really, really hard breath. So you're gonna do a full inspiration and a full expiration. If you really don't know what these graphs are, I would take some time to try and learn those. I'm gonna just say a bunch of acronyms right now with what they mean and uh, hopefully you can follow along. So right here is our tidal volume. This is gonna be um, like passive. So this is active actually inspiration and it's passive for inward elastic recoil. This right here is our expiratory reserve volume. This is the uh, amount you have that you can expire um, if you weren't doing it passively through the tidal volume. Down below here is our uh, residual volume. This is the amount that resides in the lungs even if we expire everything out of it. Um, Here's our inspiratory reserve volume. This is the amount that you can inspire still um, beyond tidal volume. Inspiratory capacity, this is at, expo, at, this is at expiration at tidal volume, how much you can inspire. Your force vial capacity is your peak that you can inspire and your peak that you can expire. Your total lung capacity is everything, all the, all the air in your lungs. But when you're doing spirometry, there's like also one more thing and it's called the force inspiratory volume one in one second and it takes like some value here and in one second, how much did you expire? And this compares it to uh, the force vial capacity. So it compares those two. But um, so when you're doing spirometry, you, you can't measure a few things. So you're not gonna be able to measure your residual volume. And because of that, you're not able to measure your force residual capacity. And that's one of the important things that differs between plethysography and spirometry. So you're only measuring ventilated gas, the gas moving in and out of your mouth. So you're out, you are able to get ERV, VT, IRV, IC, FVC, um, but you're missing your RV and FRC. So here comes our stuff for mm -hmm. plethysography. This is where you're sitting in a box and you're sitting down there and they're gonna have you breathe in and out of a tube. The box, they calibrate how much pressure they have in it and then you're gonna pant against it. And this is like always the hard thing, but the point of this is they're, you're measuring all the gas inside you because all because you're measuring actual pressure. So when you're measuring pressure, you like, this right here, like you have gas trapping in a certain alveoli and you can't get it out. Uh, you're still able to measure it because the gas is still there and if the gas still expresses a certain pressure. So this is why it includes all the gas. This was only, only ventilated gas. But so when you're inspiring and expiring, ideally this is without any resistance. So it actually looks like this. So your, your pressure in your body will be equal to your pressure in your mouth or some ratio like this. And that's why this, this line goes back and forth like this. You're matching your alveolar pressure actually. Um, but when you have increased resistance right here, um, your pressure in your body that exerts on your lungs, even though no air is moving, um, will be greater than the pressure in the mouth because you're gonna have resistance in some of your airways. That's gonna actually decrease the readout of your PM, which will be like the tube in front of your mouth. So when we're looking at this actually, the line, if you have larger lungs or if you have increased resistance is going to have a decreased slope so the line will actually look like this that's kind of an important factor this line is going to shift like this and the reason why well at a certain pressure in the mouth it'll actually take a greater pressure in the body in order to experience that pressure in the mouth um, and this once again is because some of the pressure in the body is being used to compensate for the resistance that you're having right there um, but, what, but with plethysography, uh, one of the good things is, since we're measuring all the gas, we're actually able to get our force residual, force residual capacity. So our FRC is present. And one more thing I have to say about this, uh, when this is first measured, they're actually measuring you starting at this point. So you're already reaching, you're at your, uh, you're at your, you're at your FRC line. So your FRC is right here. And so they start the experiment at FRC and you go back and forth panting in and out. So um, with the FRC, you're able to get here and the expiratory reserve volume you're able to get here. Using these two tests, that's how you're gonna get your residual volume, your, res uh, your uh, residual volume. And um, that's pretty much it with plethysography and spirometry. Um, hope that helped and see you guys soon.